It's been a while since I have done one of these video and I know for those of you that are wondering why have I not been doing news of the week video in the last two weeks. Well, I've been so focused on what has gone on in the playoffs in these last couple of weeks and that since I had to do like previews and reviews doing during the the time where I'm supposed to do news of the week video. That's why I wasn't able to do that. And the other reason is basically I have other commitments that is going on besides doing these kind of videos. So that's why I haven't really got time in terms of doing these kind of video. But bear in mind, once the offseason begin and once NLS Cup will conclude on November 10th, I will once again do what I did in the off season last year which is do two news of the week video i'll do one on wednesday and i'll do one on saturday and the reason why i'm doing two news of the week video in the off season is because usually in the off season that's when there is a lot of news that is happening that is worthy to talk about and that there's going to be a lot of signings and a lot of rumors that is just going to kind of happen every single day so that's why i have to do at least two news of the week video or I might even think about doing three news of the week video depending on how the the transfer rumor and the transfer signing has gone on or even if there is a big enough signing I'm just going to make a single video so that I don't have to include it into the news of the week but going back to this news of the week and the news that is on this board right now is the news that happened in the last seven days. So for those of you wondering, am I going to be talk about news that has happened in the last couple of weeks that I didn't do news of the week video in this video? Unfortunately, no, because I think this is going to take way too long if I am going to talk about all those news that has happened. Plus, I think some of the news that I was going to talk about in the news of the week, I kind of covered it when I was talking about the preview and review video. So, yeah, that's why I'm not going to talk about some of those news that has happened uh, before the before the, the cutoff period where I usually do the news of the week, which is, you know, I look at the last seven days of the news that has happened around MLS and the first thing that has happened in the last seven days actually was a news from yesterday which was MLS Cup is officially sold out and that it sold out hours after tickets went on sale for the general public so if you're one of the lucky ones to be able to snatch a uh, tickets to watch MLS Cup at CenturyLink Field between the Seattle Sounders versus Toronto FC then yeah congratulations because it was definitely it was definitely a mad rush in terms of getting those tickets and that we knew this was going to be the case where whenever there's like a a championship game let alone the fact that this game is taking place at CenturyLink Field and taking place at a fan base that is definitely one of the biggest and one of the most passionate fan base in MLS, you know that tickets is going to just just get sold out after, after um, a couple of hours when they release them. Now, keep in mind, when I mean sold out to the general public, I didn't mean the fact that it is actually just completely sold out and that you can't really buy it in the second-hand market. And that's the beautiful thing about the U.S. of the fact that even though when they say it is sold out, it technically isn't because you still have the secondary market that you can look at and you obviously have people decided to resell the tickets. And you also have some people that is trying to make a living out of this which is taking advantage of buying the tickets and then you resell the tickets for a profit and I know in the second hand market they're saying that the tickets in the second hand market is twice as expensive as if you would have got it and that if you were the lucky ones to be able to get a ticket before it was all sold out to the general public but yeah I mean it is definitely a very hot event to to attend on November 10th and when I mean hot event I don't mean you know it's gonna be a very hot day during that event it's just that it's going to be a very popular event and that you know even though this game there's gonna be 69,000 people that is gonna be there I bet that if this game was play play at the biggest stadium in the US or if it's play as 
at the biggest soccer stadium in the U.S., such as uh, the Rose Bowl, I bet it's going to sold out very quickly because that is how popular this game is going to be for fans to attend to. And for those of you wondering, am I going to even think about attending this game since, you know, it's not that far from me to go to Seattle to watch this game? The answer is no, because, you know, flight tickets is very expensive now, especially I am buying flight tickets literally set seven days before I am I have to fly to Seattle to watch MLS Cup and I don't think it's worth it in terms of getting like secondary tickets now if my team was playing in this MLS Cup then yeah definitely I would do it or if if the MLS Cup was happening down in LA where I can actually drive down there and then drive drive back without having taken like like a plane to get there then I might think about going there too but I just think with the way that the travel cost is and also the t the tickets for this game is just incredibly expensive um you know i i don't think it's it's really worth it and that i'm just gonna watch this on tv and then i will of course do the preview of mos cup and then the review will come right after when mos cup just finished now inter miami is rumored to get javier machia no, uh, as they were reported, and it seemed like these days, Inter Miami is basically rumored to every single kind of age-old European star that is going to be coming to MLS, and I'll tell you what, I thought Javier Marciano, after he left Barcelona, I thought he was going to retire. I didn't even realize that he's actually playing in the Chinese Super League, and now Inter Miami are looking to try to get him. Now, I know if they're going to try to get him, most likely, I don't think it's going to be on a DP contract because you don't see a lot of designated players that plays in in the defensive role or in the defensive midfield role that is is a designated player. And that, you know, for Inter Miami, I know they've been linking with so many of these kind of, kind of superstars that is just kind of way past their prime, but they're going to come to MLS and do some amazing things stuff, you know. I don't know if they're going to have enough DP kind of contract to offer these guys. And that there are going to be some guys that I think think are going to be guys that is not going to be offered a DP contract. Even though they are one of the most renowned names in in world soccer. And certainly Javier Marciano is one of them. But I just think that if they're going to get him, it's not going to be on a DP contract. It's not going to be like what they've been linking with. Edison Cavani or even Luis Suarez to play striker for their team and that those guys are I think are definitely going to be designated player uh New England Revolution have signed former Manchester United defender Alexander Butner and keep in mind when I mean former Manchester United I don't mean that he was a regular start there's for this team in fact I heard he only started or only played 12 games for this team uh, I don't know exactly how many games did he start out of those 12 games but I also have heard that he has spent multiple times with other clubs mostly in the Netherlands so yeah it's not one of those kind kind of well-known kind of player that is that is coming from Manchester United that is going to come to MLS and you know he is 30 years old so he's kind of getting right up to that age of you would say it's kind of like a well-known European star coming to MLS as um this case this situation is not the case and that i guess they decided to sign him because you know the refs i think one of the issues that they kind of had in 2019 is the defensive issue and that there was always a question whether if this refs team have enough in terms of the defensive end to be able to to hold in shape so that they of course make it to the playoffs and you know last year they prove prove at least when Bruce Arena took control of this team that they do have enough defensive structure so that they can make the playoffs but something tells me they really need to add some some pieces in terms of that defensive end and we shall see if Alexander Butner will be a guy that will add some def defensive reinforcement to this refs team. Uh, Oscar Perea is rumored to be the leading candidate to manage Orlando City. And this one is kind of interesting because Perea, I haven't heard anything about how he has been fired, fired from Club Tijuana. I know he hasn't really done as well of a jo job at there as he hoped 
that he would be, but... You know, he's still the current manager for Cholos, and that unless if Orlando City are going to get him, they need to first first hope that Cholos would, would fire him, and that when he, of course, is going to be out of a job, that's when they, of course, are able to think about getting him. And, you know, this is definitely not a bad bad hiring. I mean, you know, Perea, he has proven that he... he he is a guy that can can do well in MLS and that what he has done with Dallas when he was in charge was just nothing but spectacular. And he's always a guy that's known to believe in the academy and play a lot of the youth player. And, you know, Orlando City, I know a lot of people don't really kind of talk about the academy of Orlando City, but from what I heard, it's kind of an upcoming academy and that their academy has started to provide some good players on on that squad where you know they can use some of those academy players to be as starting 11 and that if Oscar Pereira does get hired from Orlando City then that will really help in terms of of getting those academy player and getting those those uh, some of the best academy player on that team to play in that squad and hope that Orlando City you know with that this way to approach stuff and kind of kind of with the same philosophy of what Perez did to FC Dallas, and that if he's going to join this team, team and manage this Orlando City team, then hopefully that kind of philosophy will be a way to finally getting themselves over that hurdle of making the playoffs for their first time in franchise history. Um, the San Jose Earthquakes, of course, were signed Fuentes, Cavallo, and at Activate the option to buy clause on Jutsen, and you know this was a this is another one of those news that I actually didn't make a single video, and I know people wondering why do I not make single video talking specifically about what the Quakes have done in the off season? Well, the answer is like what I said with the news of the week. I haven't got a lot of time in terms of doing these video, but I'll probably maybe start doing some of these kind of kind of video where you know whenever the quakes made some big move i would just do an individual video in terms of including into the news of the week and that i think this news isn't really that big of what i really need to kind of just make it into a single video because we knew the quakes was going to potentially re-sign Fuentes and Cavallo and that there was a lot of hints that they were going to activate the the option to buy clause on Jutsen and I'll tell you what Jutsen is one of the guy that has kind of really proved me wrong in terms of the fact that I thought he was just not going to do much for this team and that you know when we first bought him and that we heard he was coming from a second division in Brazil I thought it was the Quakes once again doing something that they've been doing so so much in the past couple of season which is penny pinching and trying to get some of these unknown kind of talents from the second division of brazil and hope that it of course work out and nine out of ten times it does not work out but for whatever reason this season jutson is not part of that nine out of ten he is actually one of those players that we just kind of bought Bought him from from out of nowhere, and yet he was actually a very impact player in terms of that midfield. So I'm happy the fact that we of course sign him to to a option. We of course activate that option to buy clause to to buy him and sign him permanently. And now let's just hope that we can do the same case with Espinoza, which I don't know if that is gonna be the case, and especially the fact that you know. I remember when we got Christian Espinoza and that there was no option to buy by Klaus when we first loaned him to the Quakes. That makes me a little bit worry of the fact that we're not going to do the same thing we did to Jutsen to what we we did to to Espinoza. And by far Espinoza is our top priority in terms of trying to get get him signed permanently so that he I think most likely is gonna be our our new DP in this team. Um, the Portland Timbers have re-signed Sebastian Blanco to a multi-year contract, which, you know, this, this definitely makes sense for the Timbers signing one of their most, most impact attacking player on that team. But there's still a lot of question about whether or not if the Timbers are going to do the same with Diego Valeri and that 
you know, there's a lot of of big decision that the Timbers going to have to make in the offseason because of how the roster is and that there are some people, not just Valeri, that is going to be out of contract and that, you know, they need to make some tough decision to try and to either re-sign them, the, them for next season or they're going to have to let them go because, you know, they, they I think they probably will not, not able to sign all of them because of the how the salary cap of course works but you know we shall see what are they going to do in the off season as i heard they have a very sticky situation in terms of what they're going to do with their roster heading into the off season and you know people will say it's a sticky situation is because of the future of diego valeri it's more than that um the columbus clue the app yeah. The Columbus Clue, I meant the Columbus Crew signed fullback Harrison Affo to a contract extension, which again, this one makes perfect sense because Affo is one of the best fullback in this team and that there was no doubt that they were going to sign him to a contract extension. And Minnesota United extended Ico Parra and Michael Boxo to a new deal. Obviously, I'm pretty sure they pay a fortune to... to extend Ico Parra's contract because since he is the defender of the year and the fact that that he has been a a vital piece to that back line there's no doubt that they pay a lot of money to try to sign Ico Parra and it's the same can say about Michael Boxhall too which a guy that you know I think think in the first two season when he was with Minnesota, a lot of people think that he was one of the worst defender in the league. But you see how how much improvement that he have made this season is just quite incredible, and that there's no doubt that he de- clearly deserved this new deal. And that you know, for Minnesota, they definitely spent a lot in terms of trying to extend the contract of some of their back back line and let's see if they of course can now use that money not just to 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 extend contract in terms of keeping some of some of those players that make their back line very strong but also they need some attacking present which is something that this team really lacks down the stretch this season uh the galaxy gm dennis to close speak to zlatan on possible return to the galaxy and you know I still don't know if this is going to happen with Zlatan staying in MLS because I know there's been a ton of report of the fact that he's going to go to Europe. Uh, I heard reports that he was going to go to Napoli. And then a couple of days ago, I heard report that he was going to go back to Spain to an unnamed La Liga club. And, you know, Zlatan at 38 years old, even though you would think that, you know, if you you are a team that that is trying to trying to you know let go of a 38 year old sh- striker it makes perfect sense but here's the problem this is lat time age doesn't re- really kind of matter and that if there's one player that can can be a possibility of defeating father time it would be zlatan ibrahimovic i mean this guy scored 30 goals when he's 37 years old right now and that I have no doubt that there's a reason why Dennis Teclosa is really really want want Zlatan to stay with the Galaxy because if Zlatan does leave the Galaxy then yeah there is a big question of whether or not if they can of course replace his goal scoring ability and the other thing that I also think is the reason why Zlatan probably would not stay is their whole DP situation which is you know, Zlatan is under a DP contract. Um, other guys that's under the DP contract for the Galaxy are are guys like Alison Drini and also Jonathan Dos Santos. And keep in mind, when they got Pavone during the summer, they did not sign him on a DP contract. And that somehow, in some way, they actually signed him on a loan deal. And that there is no doubt that I think for the Galaxy, they going to have to, you know, really make a decision of either get rid of Zlatan so that they can of course keep Pavone or not keep Pavone 
so so that they can of course keep Zlatan or they can do a third option where they can keep Zlatan and Pavone but they're gonna have to either get rid of Jonathan Dos Santos or Roman Alessandrini and something tells me Alessandrini is probably the ones that's gonna be sacrificed since he didn't really play a lot this season even though he kind of had like that injury that leg injury that he suffered throughout the season so yeah it'll be very interesting to see whether or not if Zlatan is going to be staying for the Galaxy or the fact that he's going to be going going back to Europe and retire there. Um, Paxton Palmico and John Nelson undergo surgery to repair core muscle injury and expected to back for the preseason. So, I guess, you know, this is definitely good news for Dallas fan considering the fact that both of these guys should be back for the preseason despite the fact that they're undergoing surgery and this is also something that is not very uncommon where there's a lot of players usually when they have to undergo surgery they usually do it at the beginning of the offseason because at least that will give them enough time to just just recover in the offseason so that they can get ready for the preseason and that even in some some kind of serious injury that that needs like longer rehab after they undergo surgery. At least if they do it in the beginning of the off season, they don't have to. There's a high possibility that they don't need to miss the entire season if they would have done it during the season. So yeah, you know, it's, it, this is something that is not very uncommon, and that you know, I think for Dallas fan, the best thing that they they love to hear is the fact that. Both of these guys are going to be expected to be back for the preseason. Um, Burholter apologized to the American Outlaw by not thanking the traveling fans in the defeat against Canada. So, you know, Greg Burholter, obviously he wrote an apology letter to the American Outlaw, which is the U.S. Men's National Team supporter group. And, you know, I understand that he is trying to write this apology letter just to... You know, trying to to tell the fans that, you know, I kind of screw up in terms of what's going, what happened in that game against Canada. And that I promise you that in the next game, when we play the same team down in Orlando City, that things are going to be different. Which, it's that's good that he, of course, did that. But here's the thing. I don't think fans will really care about a coach writing an apology letter to them. What they would care is that if that coach can deliver the goods and can deliver a victory against Canada in in that that game game in a couple of weeks. Because if Burholter lose again to Canada or unable to get a win against them at home, then you know that that apology letter doesn't mean anything. And that, you know, I feel like maybe the, the outlaw is going to kind of just make print that apology letter and just throw it right back to Greg Burholter's face if they decided to if the national team once again lose to Canada in in the that next nations league match in, during the international break because at the end of the day you know with coaches in terms of trying to trying to apologize to their fans because of the way that he's been kind of managing you know it only they work temporary, but the the bottom line is, if you do not get resort, then that it that these kind of apology letter doesn't really mean anything to the fans. And finally, Serginio Dias have made his decision that he is going to be sticking with the U.S. men's national team. So there's been a couple of news of the fact that whether or not if Serginio Dias was going to be representing the U.S. or representing Netherlands, and it turns out he made his decision, and that I think it's a good decision for him to stick with the national team, considering the fact that you know if he would have represent the Netherlands national team I don't know if he's gonna actually gonna get any playing time or even get any call because the Dutch national team has much higher standard than what the US men's national team has so you know I think the best way of him to get some playing times for the national team is definitely with the US although even though technically it might not be a good idea in terms of joining the US men's national team with the crisis that they are going on right now you know if he's gonna get playing time and if he's hope to get some playing time with his country the US men's national team is I think the one one team that 
that is cat kind of his only option in terms of getting playing time but either way hope you guys enjoyed this video if you do make sure you guys leave a like smash that subscribe button and yeah i of course will see you guys next time